Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Uh, welcome dear students and this class of BS English. Your course title is Semantics and your course code is ENGL4140. I am your course instructor, Tayyiba. Students, uh, we have discussed various topics of semantics including uh, dimensions of meaning, semantic roles, lexical relations or reference, sentences, argument and uh, speech acts and uh, there are so many others. But today we will discuss a very interesting topic of semantics and the topic that we will discuss in today's session is the semantics of morphological relations. So, uh, the agenda of uh, today's presentation includes formal processes of derivation or uh, semantic processes and derivation. Then, we will discuss verbs that are derived or that are formed from nouns. And in this regard, uh, we will discuss different categories, including transfer meaning. And the second one is effective meaning, then instrumental meaning, and the next one is vehicular meaning. So let's start our today's session. Our today's topic is the semantics of morphological relations. Students, have you ever noticed that the adjective long and the noun length and the verb lengthen they are partly similar or alike and at the same time they are partly different in form the way the sound and the way they are written and partly alike and partly different in meaning okay if we take long as the one that has the simplest form then we can say that the noun and the verb are derived from the adjective by certain processes. The noun length. The noun length it is derived from the adjective long. So what is the addition? The addition of th and a change or mutation of o or to e. And the verb lengthen. How the verb lengthen is formed? The verb lengthen is formed by another addition. And what is that addition? That is en. So these formal processes, we can say they are fairly easy to describe. But semantic relations are more subtle. The noun length, we can say it is an abstract term. Means the amount or extent by which something is considered long. We may say sometimes the length of a room, the length of a day. Or we can also talk about a concrete term for a piece of something uh, that is measured uh, linearly. Or we, we can talk about a length of rope. The verb lengthen is, uh, you can say, approximately to make longer. For example, I'm saying uh, to lengthen a shirt or to become longer. So, in form, the verb lengthen seems to be derived from the noun length. But when we consider or we uh, think about the meanings, the sense of the lengthen, it is derived directly from that of the adjective long. So, same is the case with the words like strong, strength, strengthen. You can see they show the same formal relationships as we have discussed in the case of long, length or lengthen. And they have similar semantic relationships. So, in this chapter we will explore the formal ways of derivation at a length, the semantic relations uh, that exist between words, verbs that are derived from nouns, then nouns, they are 
derived from adjectives and adjectives from verb. Okay, uh, there are four different types or you can say four different processes of the relational relationship between words and these are called addition, mutation, conversion and subtraction. So first of all, we would uh, like to talk about addition. That what is addition or what is the process that is involved. We can say that some lexemes they are formed by combining morphemes. Like in the case of armchair or busybody, which uh, consists entirely of free morphemes. There are also other cases in which there are partly free and partly bound morphemes. Both are there. In this way, I would like to quote uh, the example of disarm and blue eyed. In disarm and blue eyed, they are uh, both partly free and partly bound morphemes are involved. Then uh, there is also another category in which uh, we can see entirely bound morphemes are there. Okay, I would like to quote uh, the example of astronaut and biology. These are composed entirely of bound morphemes. The next process is mutation. Okay, students, uh, take the example of proud and pride. Both these words are semantically related. You can also say that both these words are also formally related as well. But we cannot say or it's difficult to say for us that one is formed by adding something to the other. So which type of process is involved here? We can say a derivation is accomplished here by a change of vowel. So there are also other examples in those examples instead of the change of vowel, the change of consonant, it can also be in the process of mutation. For example, if I'm saying believe and believe. So there is a change of consonant. There are also other examples in which both vowels and both consonants are involved. And sometimes there is also a change of stress. Okay, take the two words, choice and choose. Now, in this example, there is a change of both vowel and consonant. The third category or the, you can say, third formal way of derivation is conversion or zero change. This is so a uh, simple change of a word of one class to a word of another class and there is no formal alteration, no formal change. We can say, for example, clean, dry and equal. They are adjectives and they are also being used as verbs. So the relation of adjective clean and to the verb clean is similar. As we have already discussed in the case of adjective, long to the verb lengthen. Fan, hammer are also verbs and these words are also used as nouns. Then capital, initial and periodical, they are also nouns and also adjectives as well. Now I would like to uh, discuss uh, the third category or process of derivation that is subtraction and it's also called as reduction. It means when we are removing the parts of certain lexemes. We are removing the parts of certain lexemes to form new lexemes. And uh, one kind of such shortening is called acronym. There is also another type that is called clipping. So first of all, we will talk about acronym. Acronyms or acronym is a word that is derived from the written form of a construction. And students, that construction is a sequence of words. And these sequence of words, they together have a meaning. 
and uh, some acronyms uh, you people have heard in your daily life as a sequence of uh, letters as in the case of UK. UK is the acronym of United Kingdom. Then uh, most common USA, USA for United States of America. And in other acronyms, the letters combine to produce something uh, that is pronounceable as in the case of AIDS. As you know that AIDS is for acquired immune deficiency syndrome. Then uh, we can talk about UNESCO. UNESCO stands for United Nations Educational, Scientific and Cultural Organization. As these uh, examples they illustrate that the acronym is typically, but it's not always the case that these acronyms are formed from the first letter of each written words. There are also other examples in which the acronyms they may be uh, formed from part uh, or parts of a single word as in the case of ID for identification or sometimes we call TB for tuberculosis, TV for television. There might be other so many examples. There is also another process. This process is applied uh, to existing words. It's called clipping. The meaning of clipping is the use of part of a word, the use of part of a word to stand for the whole word. In this regard, I would like to uh, quote the example of laboratory. Laboratory is abbreviated to lab. So, same is the case. Telephone is to phone. Then again, refrigerator to fridge. And sometimes a vowel is added when other material is cut away. As in the case of Shivi for Chevrolet or Divi for Dividend. Students, in these examples and in many others, we saw only few, uh, you can say, uh, shorter ways of designated or designating what was previously designated by longer term. But sometimes uh, clipped forms come to have meanings that are distinct from the original source. You can say uh, that the part of speech may change busy just as we have discussed dividend noun. So sometimes uh, such uh, changes, they also change the meaning. And the people, they have a different type of connotations regarding these words. Semantic processes in derivation. Determining in which uh, direction the derivation goes. It is, you can say it is a more bigger picture. And it's very important. Because when we are describing the meanings that are added when our work it becomes a noun or a noun it is converted into an adjective or adjective it becomes a verb. So in this whole scenario we have to recognize the certain facts because uh, nouns they represent entities and verbs represent activities or states. And as far as adjectives are uh, concerned, they represent qualities or characteristics. So, when a verb, it is converted into a noun. We can say the noun may refer to a concrete entity as in the case of person, object or place associated with that verb, what the verb signifies. Or the noun uh, may be a way of treating the activity or the status of any entity or a thing that can be quantified. Okay, take uh, a simple sentence for example. He kicked it. Now, I'm quoting the uh, example of verb kick. In this sentence, there is no indication of how many times he kicked. So, the information, it can be added to the sentence, but it cannot be students added to the verb itself. 
Okay, in contrast, if we use the account nouns trick to fill this blank, he gave it. Now we have to uh, select or we have to choose from these options a kick or a couple of kicks or several kicks. Or we can also uh, even select or choose another expression instead of this one. Precisely or uh, loosely that indicates the number of kicks or something like that. Students, the verb kick, it cannot be quantified. But the noun kick, it must be. So similarly, from adjectives like hard and stringy. The nouns hardness and the stringiness can be formed. So the adjectives can be preceded by little words. These are qualifiers that intensify or lessen the meanings they convey. Very hard, rather stringy. The nouns cannot be modified this way. And when a verb is derived from a noun, so an entity, it becomes a predicate, an activity or status, and losing its quantifiable nature. But it is becoming a part of the tense and aspect system, as we have already discussed in our previous sessions. Students, similarly, when an adjective like rich is converted to a verb rich, there is no longer, no longer the possibility of quantifying modifiers like very or somewhat or too associated with the quality rich. Instead, we can say temporal modification is required. Furthermore, we can say that uh, the adjective or stative predicate is converted into a Positive predicate. And a noun or verb is converted to an adjective. And it gives a word that names a quality. Quality that is associated with some entity. For example, milky. And many such adjectives. However, they are simply, you can see, linguistic expressions. For example, periodic. An adjective like periodic, it does not really mean something different from period. So it has only a different use in sentence. Well, let's uh, discuss the verbs formed from nouns. Verbs derived from nouns uh, fall into several well-defined categories or types. We will discuss a classification uh, with a few examples or illustrations of each type in a detailed manner. Here in all these examples, uh, you people will find different symbols and signs. N stands for the nouns from which the verb V is derived and X means the object of the verb. If you people will find it in any example. Transfer meaning. Now students, uh, look at this example. Roger painted the wall. The noun paint names an entity. And it is uh, something, a concrete substance. As far as the verb phrase paints the wall, it can be uh, rephrased or paraphrased in so many ways. As we can say, put paint on the wall or apply paint to the wall. We can also say it in other way, provide the wall with paint or cause paint to be on the wall. So that is cause the inception of a new location. So we can say the verb denotes the transfer. The transfer of an entity that is named by underlying noun. And which is that noun? Paint. And the object of the verb? The wall is a location. The goal of transfer. 
Roger names the agent. Agent who causes the new location. Now this transfer meaning or this sentence it can be uh, represented in two ways. Now look at uh, the diagram in this slide. Roger paint wall. In this case Roger is agent. Paint is the theme and it's also the verb and what is the function of wall? Wall is goal here. But we can say that the notion of this goal it can be even described or it can be uh, defined in a more explicit manner. In a combination of causation plus location. Now look at the other diagram. Now the same sentence it can be represented in two ways. Now agent is the Roger and the predicate of sentence is divided into inceptive cause and S theme. S theme here it symbolizes the theme of the sentence. So the theme of the sentence is further divided into theme and place. Theme is paint and the place is wall. And students uh, there are uh, also such other types of verbs as water the flowers or comfort a friend, oil a hinge. Now uh, look at this example. Susan peels an apple. Here is the noun peel. The noun peel, it names a concrete entity and the verb phrase is equivalent to remove the peel from an apple. In other ways, we can say separate the peel from an apple. So, affect an apple by removal of the peel. So we can see the verb peel denotes transfer and its object. An apple names a sort of location. So the sort of or the source of transfer. Now just like uh, we did in the previous slide, this sentence it can be uh, represented by two ways. Susan peel apple. Now Susan is agent here, peel is the theme and also the verb and apple is source. We can also see uh, this one in another way. It can be divided into agent and predicate. Agent is Susan. Now predicate can be divided into terminative cause and S theme. And there is a further division of S theme that is theme and place. Now peel is theme and place is apple. There are also uh, other similar verbs maybe you people have heard. Does the furniture then milk milk a cow or skin a rabbit. In short we can say that uh, these uh, transfer verbs along with their objects these uh, verbs they tell about the movement the movement of something to a goal or from a source that is causing the inception of a new location and there might be another case we can say the termination of previous one so the noun from which the verb is derived may name the thing moved the new location in other words we can say goal or it can also be a previous one that is the source okay now we'll talk about effective meanings some nouns they name a status and verbs derived from such types of nouns explain or express causation Causation or we can say the inception of that status. Now uh, look at this example. The accident crippled my friend. 
this sentence it can be rephrased or paraphrased in uh, different ways you can say for example the accident made my friend a cripple or accident caused him to uh, be or become a cripple and uh, the thematic structure of this sentence it can be again represented in two ways as you people are looking at this diagram accident is agent here friend is affected and cripple is the status that is the verb in another way we can say this sentence is divided into two parts agent agent is the accident and predicate is further divided into inceptive cause and s theme s theme again it has further two divisions theme and status so theme is friend and cripple is the status there are also uh, similar verb phrases you people uh, might have seen or, or you people have heard just like group the papers or cash a check students there is also an other example she babies her husband it means that makes him like a baby so we can say in this uh, sentence or this sentence uh, tells us about a pseudo effect what is the meaning of to baby someone it means to baby someone is to treat uh, any person like a baby or a child give the person a status similar to that of a baby and the thematic structure of this sentence is the same as we have already discussed in the the accident crippled my friend and there are also similar verb phrases are there just scrap the papers or be friend a stranger some nouns that name a status these nouns are converted to verbs converted to verbs that have a meaning uh, something like you can say cause oneself to have the status and the status with regard to another entity look at these two examples number 1 addy is always clowning number 2 mr and mrs blake chaperoned the party okay if we compare the first sentence with the sentence addy is a clown which links a theme addy and the status clown now this sentence addy is always clowning it tells us that addy takes on this status make makes himself like a clown and in the other sentence we can say or the other sentence tells us that the blakes become or make themselves chaperons chaperons with respect to a party now these sentences can be represented in this way addy is agent and predicate is divided into inceptive cause and s theme now s theme is divided into theme theme is addy and the status the status is clown as far as the other sentences concerned the blakes agent predicate inceptive cause and s theme then s theme is again divided into three categories theme status and affected theme blakes status chaperon and affected which one is affected the party is affected there are also other examples like the road branches flower blossom or you can say ali is cooked a meal or ali pilots a plane students some nouns uh, they name an entity and the corresponding verbs can be interpreted as meaning means uh, to say produce the entity or cause the entity to exist okay listen these examples root gardens and the other one is this tree shades the garden okay if we are interpreting 
or explaining the proposition uh, that is there in these sentences. We can say uh, something like that, that root creates or we can say uh, root produces or root makes a garden. And as we have earlier discussed, the tree produces shade. The tree produces shade with reference to the garden. So what will be the structure of these sentences? In the first sentence, root will be the agent and effect garden. That is the verb. And in the other sentence, tree will be the agent and effect shade and which is affected the garden is affected and if uh, we go a step ahead you can say or consider the meanings to be we can say a uh, root causes a garden to exist and the tree causes shade to exist and affect the garden so we can interpret this sentence in this way root is the agent and the predicate is divided into two parts cause and effect and effect is the garden and in the other one agent is tree predicate is again divided into three classes cause effect and affected so effect is shade and garden is affected okay now the next type is instrumental meanings look at this example uh, harry locked the door the noun lock names a kind of object a useful object or an instrument and a verb derived from such a noun indicates the use of that object with regard to some entity named by the object of the verb thus we can say lock the door means use the lock use the lock with regard to the door or with respect to the door affect the door by means of lock now it can be represented or illustrated uh, in this way as few people can see in this diagram harry is agent what is affected door is affected and lock means verb here and uh, similar uh, verbs appear in other expressions like uh, we can say button a coat or comb and brush one's hair or hammer a nail and uh, just uh, just to bring out more clearly the no notion of the causation we can say Harry caused the door to be affected by the lock. So, it can be uh, uh, described through this structure. Again, we can uh, divide it into two parts, agent and predicate. Harry is agent and predicate is further divided into cause and as theme or sentence theme. Then as theme is further divided as affected. Which one is affected? Obviously, door is affected and affecting means lock. There is also another example. Lucy penned a note. Now, here is noun pen that is being used as an instrument that names a useful object or an instrument and the verb pen means use N to produce. Then what is this N? N stands for the noun from which the verb is derived so the verb pen means use n to produce effect cause x and effect x by means of n it can be represented by this way lucy is agent effect is note and pen means is used as a means that is a verb but uh, we can say that this type of instrumental meanings it is uh, not very common there is also another example perhaps we can say voice voice and opinion is another example of this type of 
instrumental meanings. Now we'll discuss vehicular meanings. We can say it is a special kind of instrument or a special kind of instrument is a vehicle or a means for going and coming or you can say uh, for moving some entity from one place to another. For example, Sandra is skating from here to the corner. The company is trucking ore from mine to the factory. Now, in these two sentences, the verb skate is more or less, you can say, equivalent to move. Move oneself on skates. And the truck can mean move something by truck. Other verbs uh, that are derived from nouns uh, which name instruments of, of moving, uh, they can be a bicycle, a bus, a parachute as well. So we can say this sentence or uh, both these sentences express transfer or you can say causing an entity, Sandra or O, to change from one location to another. Now uh, I would like to summarize uh, the classification of all these verbs uh, that we have uh, discussed that have been derived uh, from nouns. So first of all uh, we will discuss transfer. So paint, paint verb names it means the thing transferred or object names the goal. And the second one is peel. Peel is the thing transferred and the object names the source. Then the category C, bottle. Bottle is the goal. And what is the object or what is the name of the object? The name of the object is the thing transferred. Then the next one is mine. What is mine? It is the source. And in the object, it is the thing transferred. Now we'll discuss the next category, that is effect. Number one is, or A is cripple. Of verb names, a status effect. Then what is object? Object is or the name of object is the entity affected. The next is baby. Baby, as we have discussed in the example, baby is a pseudo effect. And object name is the entity affected. Then the next category as we have discussed in the example, clown. Clown in the verb names, you can say an assumed role status. Then the next is chaperon. Again, it's the same and the object name is the entity affected. Then we have discussed two examples. Two examples, garden and shade. So the garden is the verb name the thing produced and the object names the entity affected. In the third category is means lock. What is lock? Verb names the instrument and the object the affected. Then the next category is pen. Pen is in the verb names the instrument and object names the effect. The other one is vehicle, skate, the vehicle or object, subject moves, self. Then the next vehicle is truck, verb names, the vehicle and the object names, the thing moved. You can say uh, a word may fit more than one category. Because it has more than one sense. To bone means to stiffen. 
by inserting bone and also to remove bones. From similarly to dust is to apply dust to or to remove dust from. But a word may fit more than one of the categories because there is more than one way of considering the means. To hammer a nail or to pump water means using the objects named or they mean to do something as if using hammer or pump to hammer with a rock. Now I would like to summarize the whole session. Students in many languages including English language, lexical items of different or various classes. All these items they show formal as well as you can say semantic relationships. But we say that the forms which are more complex are which are more intricate formally or semantically. These forms are derived from simpler forms and formal processes of derivation include addition, mutation, conversion and subtraction. As we have uh, discussed in the formal processes of derivation and in the semantic processes that are involved in derivation and as we have already talked about how the verbs are formed from nouns. So in exploring semantic relationships that arise through derivation in today's session uh, we have dealt with uh, the category of the verbs, the verbs that are derived from the nouns as simple lexemes and as derived lexemes we have discussed and we have already uh, talked about the thematic structures or the thematic structure trees. They show the function of the simple word in a predication and the function of derived word in a different what you can say obviously uh, related predication. So uh, this is all about our uh, today's session. Thank you very much. Now I would like to acknowledge uh, the resources of this presentation. The source material of this presentation has been taken from Introducing English Semantics by Charles W. Cradler.